all our pastor and pastor friends and those pastors around the world that'll be viewing this uh, uh, YouTube upload, this video, this prophetic word for you. I uh, want to encourage you. I want to uh, say Merry Christmas to you and uh, a, a very, very prosperous new year that you're about to come into. And uh, uh, God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And uh, we bless you all in Pakistan and in India and Uganda and Nigeria and Ghana and all my friends around that are pastors I've, I've known that are, are around the world in South Africa. We bless you. And uh, I pray this word will encourage you, uh, share it. Uh, go, as you go to the YouTube page, uh, subscribe. When you subscribe, the, all the videos are automatically sent to you or uploaded, give you an alert that the video, a new video has been put on the page and that you can keep abreast of what's going on. So we bless this word and Father Holy Spirit, now have your way over me. Use me to the praise of your glory. Jesus, speak this morning to our hearts, speak to our spirits, speak to our mind. Uh, let us be mindful of you and uh, we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me uh, turn on my iPad and my podcast because uh, I, I keep forgetting to, sometimes to turn on the podcast. And you can get this podcast also, too, also on podcast. Any, any, anyone podcast, Spotify, Anchor, Google, Apple, just type in uh, Apostle Albert Buford, and you'll find the podcast. So we have podcasts listed. Also, we're on uh, for his for his for his kingdom radio blog. There's a blog talk. I'll, I'll put it up on the, on the tape. Apostle David Stafford out of Dallas. He puts my tapes on a on a blog, a radio, another radio program is getting uh, that reaches around the world. So even though we, I may may not look like a lot of people here, God is speaking around the world. Amen to other people, and I get people requests and pr and uh, prayer requests on these YouTubes. So I call this today. Uh, prophetic TV channel surfing. Uh, you, you know, you ever get on your TV and you start surfing the channels? And so the Lord spoke to me Monday, and that's what he said. He said, I want you to, I want you to show the difference between what you're seeing and what heaven is seeing and what heaven is saying on TV. Amen? So I want you to, want you to be, so there's, a, there's an American drama unfolding in the earth. And if you go on mainstream news, you're hearing all the same story, all kind of stuff. So we're going to look at prophetically, there are, there are seasons and times that God is doing things, and there's a, uh, a coming together of some situations and occurrences that are happening in the earth. Uh, over the last four years, uh, there have been a lot of things happening out of the book of, Acts, uh, book of Exodus that people have not even been paying attention to. There have been three or four or five different places in, in Asia and Southeast Asia and, and some of the places where water has turned blood red. The, the rivers have turned blood red. There was an earthquake in uh, Turkey, I think, and, and the water gushed up out of the ground blood red. There was a, uh, last year, year before last, there was a, there was a, a, a famine, of, a, a, a horde of locusts going through Africa and, and uh, Jordan and uh, uh, Iraq, and, that, and it was almost big as a city, uh, these, these hordes of hornets going through, just like out of the book of Exodus where God began to do signs and wonders. Even, even when the pandemic, we had a plague, just like in the book of Exodus, plagues came through. And even earlier this year uh, on Facebook, people were putting up, uh, show a picture of your firstborn. Remember that? Remember what was on Facebook that people said, this is my firstborn, this is my firstborn, this is a firstborn. God is speaking to the earth, and he, is, and he allows Satan to shut down all the nations of the world because God's getting ready to speak. So right now, Satan's been speaking all this year, what are we going to happen? Oh, you're going to die. Oh, the pandemic's going to kill you. Oh, we've got to shut down everything. Oh, everything's going to be bad. Ain't none of it true. It's all lies. It's like a spiritual three-ring circus taking place in the earth. You know, I used to I remember uh, when I was growing up, they had the young and the restless, search for tomorrow, sitting on the edge of the bed, looking for tomorrow, worrying about the days of our lives, <laughs> going to general hospital, needing to check up, amen, young and the restless, can't go to bed at night, you got to be out in the street at 1 o'clock in the morning, 
those were all those soaps. And, and, and when you went into projects in, 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 the, in, the, in the neighborhood where I grew up, that's what's on all day. All day. Black and white TV had soaps on all day. I can't miss my soaps. I got to watch my soaps. And in between, I think it was 2 and 3.30, they got up at 8 because there were no soaps on at that time. So they, they can go eat and then come back to the soaps, some old soaps. But in the spirit, there's a spirit. And uh, we, we, uh, we've preached about how justice is blind. We've seen how justice is blind. They don't even want to entertain the fraud that's going on in America. They don't want to entertain that they stole the election, the judges, the Supreme Court. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to, well, we're going to be blind or see no evil, hear no evil. We ain't going to speak no evil. We just, why don't you just go along with the program? God said no. And so Isaiah is my scripture, so, so for the religious out there that need a scripture, Isaiah 6 verse 10 says, Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn again and be healed. For the last four years, I've been preaching about God said, return to me, return to me. I'll give you your blessings. Return to me. Repent of your sins. Come to me. I'm, I'm calling you back to me. I'm calling the church back to me. I'm calling the people back to me. But people don't want to hear. Their ears are heavy and they can't hear what God is saying. Even justice is blind with the uh, abuse of the children. And, and, the, and our children are being uh, 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 killed by abortion and stuff. We'll get into that. Because there's things that are, that are coming spiritually, that are coming to a head in America. If you look at mainstream news and you look at what they're saying, I, uh, it, on TV you turn on ABC, NBC, CBN, CNN, all of them, and you hear what they're saying in the natural. They're saying all these bad things and, oh, Trump is a bad person and Trump is this and Trump is that. They're all lies. In the spirit realm, what the prophets are hearing, we're hearing the prophets of Baal cutting themselves and calling on their God. Those news reporters and those that are anchors on TV that you're listening to, they're really prophets of doom. They're prophets of Baal. They're calling out uh, uh, on their God to destroy America. They're calling on their God to destroy people. But in the spirit, we're calling on, we're calling on, the, we're seeing the prophets of Baal call. And very shortly, very shortly in the next uh, uh, two, three, a month or so, you're going to see the fire of God hit the earth. The fire of God's going to hit cities. It's going to hit nations. It's going to hit everywhere. The fire of God's going to, the spirit of Elijah is being raised up in this hour. Elijah had to wait and let the prophets prophesy until they got tired. And Zach, he, in fact, he said, what's the matter? Is your God on the toilet? Did he go take a, 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 a toilet break or something? I mean, they went for, for 12 hours. They were cutting themselves and calling on their God to do something, and nothing was happening. And I say, man, y'all been here all day, and your God ain't showed up and did nothing. And it, it was kind of funny that the, they were cutting themselves, and, and uh, just on a side note, the, all the people, those that, uh, you know, you hear kids, they'd be cutting their wrists and cutting their arms and, and cutting themselves. That's the spirit of idolatry. What causes people to cut themselves and hate themselves and abuse themselves. And, and their, so Elijah said, you call on your name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord, and God will answer by fire. Let him be God. And we know the story that uh, uh, Elisha uh, said, take some wood and put it in there, and then take buckets of water and pour water on the wood. And he said, now, nah, and take your sacrifice and put it in. And he said, if I be a prophet of God, let the fire of God fall. And the fire of God came down and fell in an instant. And so the fire of God is about to fall on the earth. God said in the end times, I'm not going to flood the earth, but I'm going to send fire. And a lot of times people say, well, there's going to be a nuclear bomb. No, it's going to be a Holy Ghost bomb. It's going to burn up every sin, everything in, in its path. Uh, can the blind lead the blind? Now, you need to understand that if you look at mainstream news and TV, they are not looking at it spiritually. They're looking at a humanistic mindset on the system that they've created to keep everybody in bondage. You are in bondage. You are still in Egypt in bondage. In fact, it, it, it's got so bad they tell you make brick without straw. Some of you are work, used to work eight hours. Now you've got to work 12 hours. You've got to do the work of two people or you've got to do the work of three people and give you a minimum pay to get what's done. The system of this, uh, of this world, the system of America is a corrupt system. It is not a God system. They, they, when you get born, they automatically assign a social security number to your baby and to you. That is your slave number. 
That is the number. They take that Social Security number. If you read the back of it, it says a certificate. And the wicked take that Social Security number, and they sell it, and they and make investments in your labor, and they make money off of you laboring. Do you know you're supposed to get all that money that you work for all the days of your life belongs to you, but the wicked have stolen it from you. They sold you as a slave. So we're in a place of slavery, and people don't like it, and people don't understand it. You are literally a slave to the system. God said as long as there's seed time and harvest, there will be blessings. God's system is seed time, sowing, and reaping. The man's system is working on a job, getting a paycheck, and believing that, uh, you got, that they're going to pay you on Friday. You work 40 hours, and you hope that they give you a check at the end of the week. God is, that's not God's system. So we're going to just do, I just want you to imagine that you're turning the channel on your TV, and I'm going to give you what you see, and I'm going to give you what God is saying and what God sees in the spirit. If you turn the channel and you'll watch uh, 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 Biden, so-called president-elect, he sold out America for pieces of silver, millions of dollars he's been given. The mainstream said, oh, he didn't do anything. He's a good guy. His son's a good guy. They're all good guys. They're, they, they're just a bunch of stuff. But in the spirit, I see Judas going to the religious right and selling out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. This man has sold out America to China. Many of them have sold out America to China. Socialism, communism, all that stuff. And now the church is starting to rise up and people are starting to wake up. So if you look at that channel, you can see Judas going to get his money, but you get to remember that the end of Judas was he wouldn't have hung himself because he thought he was forcing Jesus' hand to become ruler in the earth. But Jesus said, that is not the plan that I have. So Judas killed himself. If you turn the channel again to another station, you'll see, you'll see Jezebel usurping authority. You know the story about Jezebel? She took Nabal's, took a, a, a Ahab's authority, took the vineyard. She wanted some land. What is what, what is Nancy Pelosi did? She she didn't block everything. She tore up Trump's speech. She's blocking your stimulus package. They don't want you to have any money. She got on TV and said, for the last nine months, I blocked that on purpose. Because we didn't want y'all to have nothing. Because y'all didn't vote for us, so we're gonna make y'all people suffer. You gotta suffer. That's what Jezebel does. She she makes people, she wants the people, she took Nabal's land. Now, if you're suffering and 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 you don't have any income. And now you can't pay the rent, and now your landlord wants to put you out, or you got a house and you can't pay the mortgage. Guess what? They're going to come take your house. You're going to go into bankruptcy. And then when, what they did in, the, in 2010, 2008 to 2010, they took your mortgage and what they call bundled. They sold your mortgage to other mortgage companies. They put a bunch of bundles, uh, 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 subprime mortgages, and they bundled it, and then they, they took your land. They took your house. They took your whatever. You had to go to bankruptcy. They said, oh, you can't claim bankruptcy no more. We changed the law now. Uh, you, you still owe that for that house, and you have to get out of that house. And so they, they, bank, they, they uh, uh, put all those subprime mortgages together, and then they took a lot of people's houses. When the economy falls, the rich get richer because people can't afford to pay their house, so they come take your house. The rich start buying a property because they have the money. But the poor, they, can't, they, they, they just lose everything. And so if you look at it, you'll see a Jezebel system. And when I talk about Jezebel usurp authority, we've seen it in the 2016. Jezebel thought she was going to be president. Uh, Bill and Hillary, uh, Ahab and Jezebel, it was, a, it was a mess. She thought she was going to be president. The Obama pushed her in and made her president, and they wanted her to be president. But they don't tell you on Main Street News because she, was eight, she took $18 million bribe from China. Okay, so Obama had her by the neck. Okay, you took $18 million. We'll let you be president, but you're going to do what I say do. That was the plan. God had a different plan. God said, I'm going to send Darius, uh, Cyrus. I'm going to send a Cyrus in the earth to block what they're doing. And so he sent Donald Trump, this crazy man. See, I, I did a preaching message years ago don't trip over the preacher. I preached it here in Aurora because Aurora was, is, was, is predominantly, was predominantly what was a 70% white, 10% black, and I think 12% Hispanic. And I came in preaching the prophetic. And I came in preaching the deliverance and casting out demons and healing people. And people, and the white church tripped over me. 
they couldn't receive me because I was black. And so I did a message, don't trip over the minister just because what he looks like. Don't trip over Trump because of what he looks like. God chose a crazy man that, had no, that got no sense at all. He don't care about nothing. And God said, I can use him. If I can use a jackass, I can use this man because he's crazy. And he, I need somebody crazy in the White House right now. I don't need a religious man and speaking in tongues. I need somebody that's going to mess with all of them. Just te- he don't care about Democrats. He don't care about Republicans. He don't care about none of them. All of them hate him. Everybody hate him. They tried to get him out for four years, and now the same thing is the judges hate him. The big tech companies hate him. Pharmaceuticals hate him because he brought the, the, the prices of medicine down. All of them hate him. They don't let this man have another four years. Everybody turn your back on him. Everybody don't think. So you got to watch this Jezebel spirit is still trying to rise up. In fact, Jezebel is trying to get back in prophetically. Biden will not be president. It was never planned for him to be president. It's planned for Jezebel Harris to be president. So Obama can control her. She would do whatever he tells her to do. Obama even got on TV and said, I, I, you know, I wish I could uh, sit in the basement and just send messages to the president and just run things. And that's what he's trying to do. Think about it now. Bush, Clinton, all these presidents, when they, when they retired, none of them got involved in politics. They just took their millions that they stole and they went away. Who the only one stayed around? Obama. How do you become a president and you're only making $100,000 a year and when you leave the office you got $40, $50 million? I need that interest plan you own, an investment plan that you own, so I can make some of that money. Amen? So then I turn the channel again and then I look on the channel and I see everybody's trying to get rid of Trump. And then in the spirit I'm looking at Daniel. Daniel was... The Bible says, Daniel 6 verse 4 says uh, that the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault in him. So when the world was looking at uh, uh, them trying to impeach Trump, it was the same thing that they did to Daniel. Daniel had an excellent spirit. Daniel was able to interpret his dreams. Daniel was made the president over all the three presidents. He was made president, and they hated him. And so they decided, let's just let's, let's make up a rule. Anybody caught praying, go to jail. They're gonna, they, and so they said, that we can't find anything against Daniel, so let's just make up something. And so they, can't find, they couldn't find anything against Trump, so they made up impeachment. Four years of trying to impeach him. Four years, and now they're trying to get him completely out of office. And you need to understand that they did pull Daniel down. Daniel actually went to jail. Daniel stopped being president, and everybody cheered and rod, and I guess they were having a little backroom meeting saying, who's going to be president now? You, you, you can be president now. We, we got rid of him. But you got to understand, anytime the devil sets up a trap, he always gets caught in his own trap. And if you read the story about Daniel, uh, um, at the end, in Daniel 6, 24, they threw Daniel in the lion's den and God shut the mouths of the lion. And the king commanded, when they brought Daniel back out of the, out of the lion's den, the king commanded and brought those that caused, accused Daniel and cast them into the den of lions, them and their children, all their kids and their wives. And the lions had mastery of them. Y'all ever sucked on the bone? That's what the lions were. They were sucking on the bones when they got through. They, was, they chewed up everything. And break in pieces all their bones in pieces or ever they came to the bottom of the den. Amen? You can't even find no marrow anywhere. The lions tore them up. So you're looking at these things in the spirit, in the natural, then you look in the spirit. So if you turn the channel again, then you'll see uh, uh, the story of, uh, of David in there. Remember uh, uh, Ahithophel was a counselor to Absalom. Absalom tried to take the kingdom from David. He tried to rise up and say, he stood in the gate and said, if I was king, I would judge this way and judge that way. And he rose up against his own father and rose up against him. And, and we're seeing, you've seen Comey, you've seen uh, Obama, you've seen all these guys come before that, and they can't remember what they did. And they, I didn't know. I, I can't remember what I did. And just as dumb as a box of rocks, and they act stupid. 2 Samuel 15, 31. And one told David, said, Ahithophel, among the conspirators, 
This has been a big word. Conspiracy, everything. Do you understand when the truth is, t when Christians and believers tell the truth and conservatives tell the truth, on the mainstream news, they say it's a conspiracy. They're speaking conspiracy. It's just a conspiracy. They're calling the truth a lie and the lie a truth. And so these counselors rose up and gave wrong counsel to, to Absalom. And Absalom told him, and David said, I'm going to send some of my people to stay in the Senate to block his counsel. I pray turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And so God is raising up people to deal with this foolishness in America. But this is not, this is just one, on, one, on, on, on one channel. You keep changing the channel. So you see Ahithophel and, 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 and Absalom take over the kingdom and, and come against David. And Absalom wound up being killed. Uh, uh, David was really sad about it. But it's foolishness. Turn the channel again. This is a prophetic statement. This is, about, this is the convergence about to take place. Is the spirit of Elijah is about to rise in the earth at the same time everything else is going on. You, you see, Elijah and Jehu and the prophets of Baal, these mainstream reporters and news reporters have all been calling on their God, the God of abortion, the God of... Uh, 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 see, Elijah dealt with abortion. He dealt with the prophet, the, the God of Baal. Baal was abortion God. Baal was a... Baal means he that she, he that is, what, she that is without husband. They worship this God. They worship this spirit of Baal that asks for human sacrifice or abortion. Uh, uh, there was a prophetic word uh, two years ago where everybody's beginning to declare that abortion, Roe versus Wade, is going to be reversal. If you think the devil's going to sit back and just let us do it, you're in for a fight. And that's what he's doing. They're trying to bring America completely down. They're trying to shut the economy down down. They want to destroy the economy because they know the economy they have is crooked and it doesn't work. Sooner or later things are going to fall apart because they've printed in the last year over nine trillion dollars. What's backing it? Nothing backing it. It's just monopoly money. So you got America with all this cash and, the, and everybody's got all this money so the prices go sky high and so you'll be like Venezuela with a wheelbarrow full of money to get a loaf of bread. That's what they want to bring America to. See, the system that they made, this financial system, I don't want to go all the way to the, to, to the fist system it is, is the central bank system where they print money and the central bank system works off of raising the interest rates. And in order to do that, they have to have a war. They have to have a war going on in Syria, Iraq, Iran, somewhere where they can send bullets and, and guns and they can raise the interest rates. Oh, the economy is bad because we gotta, everybody's got to be on an austerity program because we're fighting a war. So you've got to be on an austerity program, but we're getting money from this war. And so Trump has blocked it to where they can't raise interest rates. He's blocked it to where They've got, to, they've got to come clean and say, our system doesn't work. See, all this stuff changed back when Nixon was president, when he went, took us off the gold standard. Gold backed our dollar. Gold has substance, had value. And he took us off that system and said, we're going to put on a fiat system. We're just going to print money, and it's going to work. Well, it doesn't work. And then Kennedy came along and said, well, we need to go back to the gold standard. And the bankers and the rich and the, the, the powers of the earth said, we're going to kill this man because he's going to mess up our system. So they assassinated him. He was getting ready to sign the paper to turn us back to gold standard where our, our money had value. Right now, your money don't have no value. A dollar you get is probably worth about 60 cents, the value of it, and it's going down. And so you turn these channels, you see all this going on, the prophets of Baal cutting themselves, and, 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 and then you got people dealing with Jezebel and dealing with Jezebel. We, we threw her off, and, and she's still mad, and she's still angry that she didn't win the election. Uh, they stole the election from me in 2016. She wasn't supposed to be elected. She, she was wicked. And so God's causing even, even the eunuchs, I speak prophetically, even the eunuchs are going to deal with this. They're, they're, even the, the eunuchs, you go to talk to people in California and say, this is not what we believe in. Shut us down, shut our businesses down, and we can't go anywhere. And, and they're rising up <laughs> against the wicked, the eunuchs. The homosexuals are rising up and saying, this is not the system we wanted. This is not the social system we thought we were getting. And now they're rising up. Notice that the dogs ate Jezebel. 
So there's an apostolic spirit God is releasing on the church that's going to deal with Jezebel. Like Jehu was an apostolic, he was like an apostle of God. God anointed him to deal with Jezebel. He had to do it apostolically. There's an anointing. I talked about the apostolic anointing last week, the power of it. The prophets could not deal with Jezebel. Even though Elijah dealt with the prophets of Baal, after he had them killed, he ran for his life. Witchcraft hit him so hard, he said, Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you like you killed my prophet. He started running, and he sat up under the juniper tree. He said, Lord, there's only me left. I'm the only one left. I'm the only one standing there strong. And God said, get up. I got 7,000 that ain't bowed to knee. But that spirit, when it hits you, you, make you it makes you want it, it puts fear in you. What hit America this year? Fear. The pandemic put fear in everybody. Oh, if you go outside, oh, you're going to, if you touch this, if you get six feet from something, you got to be six feet. The six feet means they won't put you six feet under. That's what it means. I'm just getting you closer to the grave. It won't put you six feet under. So you mean if I stand five feet and nine inches, I'm going to get the corona. Oh, it's got to be six feet. They make this stuff up because this was supposed to be the thing that would cause them to reset. Now you're starting to hear about reset the economies of the earth. Is because they know their systems are all messed up, out of whack. God's going to make America so great. The prosperity is going to be so great in America that other nations are going to want to emulate America. I saw it on TV. I was in the spirit, uh, uh, and, and I, I was in an airport in Europe, and I was looking at the TV monitors, and they were talking about Donald Trump, and, the, and these countries were talking about how well America was doing. I was in the spirit, so it's a prophetic picture how they said we need to do like America is doing God's going to turn this nation around see everybody's speaking but everybody forget that God hasn't spoken yet he letting everybody talk but when God shows up everybody shuts up when E.F. Hutton speaks but everybody listens when God speaks everybody listens God's going to speak from the heavens once again the earth is going to hear his voice once again when you turn the channel again uh, uh, you turn the channel then you see the deaf angel coming through did the deaf angel come through this year? Yes, he did. He came through and taking people out left and right. People on Facebook saying, this is my firstborn. Put your picture of your firstborn up and stuff. I covered you with oil on Christmas Eve. God had me cover you in oil with the oil of fire. Remember New Year's last year? God said, anoint everybody so I'll pass over them. That the oil of fire, that they won't be uh, sick. They won't get a disease. God's coming through. People are dying. The deaf angel has already been released. All of these are stories in the, in the Bible. And God's redoing them over in a pattern for what's about to take place in the earth realm. Now, remember now, when they came out of Egypt, when you go to Exodus 14, you'll talk about, they talked about uh, uh, when Moses said, let my people go, what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh said, no problem. I want you to make brick without straw now. I'm going to put more tribute on it. And they got mad at Moses. Where you come to deliver us from? You know, why are you messing with? You messed up. See, you done messed up now. And Moses said, what are you doing, God? And God said, just trust me, trust me, trust me. And ten plagues came through. Now, I don't know how long it took for those ten plagues to come through, but they came through, and every time the plague came through, they got mad at Moses and got upset at Moses. But God was trying to show them that he was going to deliver them, but he had to harden the heart of Pharaoh. In fact, if we're in that place now. We're in that. Everybody was shut in. They couldn't go out. The plague was everywhere, flies everywhere, blood everywhere, hemorrhoids, people getting sick, boils and tumors on everybody, and the Bible said they were shut in. The whole nation, every nation has been shut down all this year. God said, I'm going to shut the nations down, and I'm shutting the nations down for people to begin to reflect and get their reconciled with their families, reconciled with their family members, get their lives together, get back to me, make a choice who's on the Lord's side or who's on if you're on the devil's side or you're on my side, he said, I'm giving you a time to separate yourself from the world or else judgment will come on your house. So I'm, he said, God's calling you back. He said, come on back. You, you know, you can't be a part of the world and, and part of me at the same time. So Egypt, they were shut down. We're shut down. They're trying to make you shut down again this winter. But let me speak to you prophetically. This thing will be over by March or April. You won't hear anything else about no virus, anything else. It's going to be gone. It's through. It's through. Have you noticed that they're not telling you about people who died of the flu this year? It's all corona. Because people are dying of the flu. 
More people die of the flu every year than people have died of the coronavirus this year. But that if you listen to the news and, and these pundits and they're telling you all oh, people are dying, I, I keep hearing the roar. Oh, Roar's got 8,000 people. I said, well, all these people are dying. Roar ain't got that many people. Every day they got thousands of people dying. How are you dying? You dying. They're dying because you're giving them a shot or you're putting them on that ventilator and killing them. Yeah. Stay at home. I'm telling you, if you get you some Vicks or some Tylenol, uh, get you some NyQuil. NyQuil will knock you out. And you wake up five days later, heal. <laughs> you don't even know what happens. Oh, just give me another shot of NyQuil. Let me <laughs> and so you're looking at these things in the natural. And, and in the natural, in the natural, when I saw they were headed on the news, uh, a president Biden now he's now building he's now building his platform for the inauguration. In the spirit, what I saw was Haman building the gallows for himself. He's building a platform for Trump to be inaugurated on. He thinks he's going to be president. But I'm telling you prophetic, he's not going to be, it's not God's choice. He is not what God wants in, in, in control. God's going to be in control of what needs to be taking place in the earth. I'm coming out rich, and you're coming out blessed, and you're coming out prosperous with prosperity. You're not coming out broke and busted and disgusted this year. Don't let him listen to this. Remember, I said that there's a war going on. God showed up in, in 2016, 17, 18, and, and the prophetic word is that my eyes are upon you. I'm watching you. I'm watching what you're doing. And 2019 is a year of the pay. 2020 is a year of the mouth. He said, I want you to speak positive. I want you to speak what I'm saying. I want you to decree it and declare it. But 2021, you're going to see the hand of God. God's going to show up. I'm telling you, there's a difference between when Jesus shows up and God shows up. There's a big difference. When Jesus shows up, it's, it's authoritative, and, 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 but you can ask a question. When God speaks, you just shut up. Don't, even, don't show your stupidity. Just, <laughs> you don't even answer back. You know how your kids answer you back when you tell them to do something? I don't know. I don't know. When God speaks, you don't say nothing. You stand there. Shh shaking but I see the gallows being built they see an inauguration program remember now every time you create something you, you aim and hung on the very gallows they're trying to shut the church down change the channel again and then you see Joseph being thrown in the pit on, faith, on social new media no social media uh, for the last three four weeks since the election everybody's attacking the prophets you missed God. You missed it. You missed it. You said Trump was going to have be president a second term. You missed it. You missed it. You need to repent. Some prophetic words take, took Abraham 25 years to get his prophetic word <laughs> fulfilled. It ain't over with yet. It ain't over with yet. You got to wait. See, the, I see Joseph being thrown in the pit is the same thing as the church attacking the prophets and throwing them in the pit. Because what did Joseph have? Joseph had a dream. Joseph said, I had a vision, I had a dream, and he shared it with his brothers, and, and, and they said, we don't like him. Let's throw him in the pit. He's only our half-brother anyway. He ain't, he ain't he the youngest anyway. He think he's something. Throw him in the pit. That's the same thing now. They're attacking the prophets, throwing him in the pit, because they don't understand, don't realize the prophets have the pro prosperity and your posterity in their hand. For such a time as this, God's going to release the wealth of the nations to the apostles and prophets. They're going to be a blessing to you. Turn the channel again. Then you see Joseph thrown in the pit. Found out he got out of jail finally. And he became second in command of the whole nation. See, you need to understand Pharaoh was broke. Pharaoh was a broke Pharaoh until Joseph, the anointing came on Joseph and Joseph began to interpret dreams and visions. He said, you're going to have seven years of famine and you're going to have seven years of plenty. And he said, well, who can be in charge of this time in the famine? He said, you are in charge. They put Joseph in charge. He was put in jail, thrown in the pit, just ostracized, accused wrongly of sexual sin, all of this stuff, and God anointed him, and God kept him all those years while he was in prison, and he came out and be second in command. What did I say? I said two years ago, I posted on Facebook. You can go back on my page back there. I said, you will see food lines, and you see cars lined up in Mercedes and, and Cadillacs and stuff. They're going to be in food lines. What's happening? You come down here on Jericho Road on Tuesday and Wednesday. When it first took off, you couldn't even get down Jericho Road. Cars were backed up all over the place. 
and, and, and they want to make it even worse than the Great Depression. They want you to suffer. You think you voted people in there to make rules and laws, they make rules and law for themselves. These re Democrats and Republicans, they're all a bunch of crooks. You're coming out blessed. Genesis 41, 30 and 40 says, Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you all this, there is none so discreet as you are. Thou shalt be over my house, according to thy word. Thou shalt my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I've set you over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, symbol of authority, put it upon Joseph's hand. He arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Amen. You're not going to Kmart and shop no more, Joseph. We're taking you to Macy's. We're taking you to Neiman Marcus. We're going to take you. In fact, we're going to get a tailor to make your stuff. And then he said he put a gold chain on his neck. Amen. Purity, gold. Gold is a symbol of a glory. And he made him ride in a Cadillac, a limousine. They said they made him ride in a chariot that he had. But his chariot was all decked out, you know, with bling on it. Amen. They would ride through this house with bling. <laughs> and made him rule of all the land of Egypt. From, the, from being jealous and ostracized by his own half-brothers to being coming second in command. And the only reason why God did it, that he would save his family in the time of famine. In the time of trouble. In fact, the Bible says that they were, Israel was given the best land of Goshen. They gave them Goshen. Goshen was the best farmland, the best green grass. It was the best land in Egypt. And the reason why they gave it to the Israelites because the Israelites were herdsmen. They were cattlemen. They were sheepmen. And the Egyptians couldn't stand the smell of a herdsman, of a cowboy, of a, of a farmer. You know, you've been around a farm. It don't smell too good. And they said, y'all go over to Goshen because y'all stank. <laughs> Amen? Change the channel again, and, and, and in the natural, uh, I see the church attacking, the, the prophets being attacked, and the government attacking the churches, and shutting the churches down. It's like hanging between the two thieves. The remnant is hanging between two thieves. On one side, you've got, you've got the, 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 the corrupt you got to say, I'm corrupt. I know I'm a thief. I know I was corrupt, but this man didn't do it. I'm corrupt. And then you got the other thief on the other side. I said he's secular humanism or the church persecuting the apostolic church in the middle. I preached this before, that they don't want the apostolic church. They don't want, if I, if I try to go into a Catholic church and cast out devils, they'd throw me out the door. If I try to go in there and speak in tongues or prophesy, they would run me out of, they'd beat me up. They wouldn't receive it. That's the same thing Jesus. Jesus came into town on a donkey. They were praising him, and the priest came out and said, make these people shut up, these children shut up. Don't you know we're having church in here? They missed the one who created the church. <laughs> they, they missed the anointing because he was walking by, and they said, we're having church in here. A bunch of rules and regulations in this place. Bondage is in there. We make people bring us doves and, 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 and sheep and stuff, and, 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 and we give them old lame, sick doves to sacrifice, and we give them old, we take the best for ourselves, but we give them. We count our phylacteries, and, and we make them do stuff that we wouldn't do ourselves. Change the channel, and you'll see this hanging between two things. Corruption. I posted three years ago. Go back four years on my page back there. I did a long thing about corruption is going to be exposed in America. And then in a long thing about justice is going to come to America. You're seeing it and living it right now. Do you know this is the most exciting time to be alive? Do you know history is being made right now? We've gone past the book of Acts, and we're going into the completion of the kingdom age. We're getting ready to step into the kingdom age where Jesus will rule and reign for a thousand years. Now, if you think the world system is tougher than God's system, you're, you're wrong. God's system is very strict. He said, think on these things. You he said, you should not drink. You should not fornicate. You should not smoke. You should not do this. What? That's like in the book of Exodus. God brought him out and said, what? You brought us out here to die? I'd rather go back to Egypt where I can smoke my lick, drink my liquor and smoke my cigarettes and, 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 and have watermelon. And, and at least we have some fish and watermelon. Out here, we ain't got nothing. God said, I'm trying to show you another system. He said, I'm going to take you into your promise, but I got to teach you to get Egypt out of you so you can trust me. And they couldn't trust God. God said, we ain't got no water. God said, okay, Moses speaks to the rock. Water came out of the rock. We ain't got, no, we ain't got nothing to eat. He said, give him some meat. 
pheasant came down. They complained about the meat. What's this manna? You giving us manna now? I'm sick of this manna. Manna in the morning, manna in lunchtime, manna at dinner. I'm tired of like saying oatmeal in the morning, oatmeal at lunchtime, oatmeal at supper time. Amen. Beans in the morning, beans in the lunchtime, and beans at supper time. I grew up in it after after World War II. I'm in World War II we, when we get the, the you get coupon book and they and and you you get the puffs, the big bag of puffs. Be eight of us in the house and that bag of puffs be gone in about 20 minutes. You eat that puffs, you eat them puff sandwich uh, uh, cereal, and you be hungry in 15 minutes because the number of air you're eating it just. They gave us that stuff. We ate oatmeal in the morning. We didn't have food. You had to, you had to. Uh, make it better. Then you change the channel and then you see the Red Sea. This is another prophetic place where we are, where we're converging at the Red Sea right now. Everybody is in a straight place. Everybody is, uh, is, is, is uh, the world is back after you. Pharaoh's after you. Pharaoh said, we want them back into bondage. We want them shut down again. We want them in their houses. We want them to depend on us. We want, to, we want them to be dependent on us. We will give you a, we'll give you a stimulus check. We'll give you a, a, a little check to hold you over. We're gonna, we're gonna, our plan is to get you in your houses. We'll give you a little money. And then what we want to do is we want to give you a shot that's going to change your behavior and going to change your attitude toward Christ. And if you and we'll give you this shot, and we'll erase your debt, but you've got to take the shot. There's one senator already on, on TV saying, well, this is what they need to do. Give him $1,500 uh, uh, or $1,200 or $15,000 or something like that, and to get the shot. People are, people are getting Bell's palsy from the shot. They tell you that on TV? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Your face all twisted and all swollen up because you didn't got the Bell's palsy? They got all kind of stuff they want to give you. I'm t listen, I've had over three or four dreams where God showed that where, I, where they were trying to force me to take a shot. I had one dream where the military came in, and and and, and the, the, uh, they took all the Bibles, and they wanted you to say whether you're a Christian or not. Then another dream, they came in and they were going to make me take a shot. They had strapped me into a chair. They said we're going to give you the shot anyway. And the Lord said, take it in my name. And when I said, I'll take this shot in the name of Jesus. And when they gave me the shot, nothing happened. Because everybody else was going crazy when they took the shot. But me, I just, and they said, ain't nothing wrong with this guy. He, he ain't got no fear. I said, no, the people that have fear, that shot operates out of your fear. And so we're at a Red Sea experience. Your back is against the wall. You can't go to work. You can't go to, you can't go to the restaurant. You can go to Walmart, you can go to the liquor store, but you can't go to work. We don't want you to go to work. You're going to give everybody a disease that we don't know nothing about, that we created. God didn't create it. Man created it. So I don't need man's shot. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. So you're at this place of divine protection. People getting mad. And they say, well, we need to just go along with the program. So many Christians are now saying, well, well, well Biden won. Why don't y'all just accept it and go along with the program? Well, that's Pharaoh trying to get back in control again, the good old boys club, back in control again so things can be like they were. They can keep stealing from you, keep taking from you, keep, keep, uh, 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 the, the, now, Elijah dealt with the prophets of Baal. Baal had to do with abortion. Yesterday, if you read the paper on Friday, Massachusetts just passed the bill in the House. They've got to go to their Senate that they can begin to abort babies right before birth. And, and it's for young girls. And the young girls don't have to tell their parents. This is what, this is, see, the kingdom of darkness operates out of blood, but it operates out of the blood of the young children. All adults, they don't need you. They don't, demons don't like your blood. When you got, when you're young, they want the young baby blood. They're upset. Demons operate, their strength comes from the blood, human blood. He cursed Eve. He cursed the ground. He cursed Satan. Satan's in the ground. He cursed it. He cursed it. And so the blood, it gives them strength, but the blood of Jesus delivers us. The blood of Jesus is holy. So the blood, so that's why you have wars. That's why they try to create wars everywhere because they want the blood. When the wars come, they rape the women, they, 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 they chop off heads, and the demons want blood. There's no mercy. And so 
All this blood is crying out from the ground. They're trying to bring people back into sacrificing babies again. The first thing that President Biden said, I'm going to reverse this thing with Planned Parenthood. We're going to give them back their money so they can kill more babies. Because these politicians have gone to, gotten so bad, some of them, that they drink the blood of these babies in secret. And the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland uh, produces something when children are in fear. When a person is in fear, it causes your adrenal gland to produce more or something, and they drink it. Satanists. I won't get into it, but you can read all this stuff. They, there's a restaurant in, in Hollywood that have human, eat human flesh. Change the, cha the, the God's going to protect his people. We're in a place where we got, God's got to come. What happened? God split the Red Sea. There's a prophetic word. There's going to be a sea of red in this election that is going to be red. It's going to be Republican. What happened? They shut it down. So God said, I'm going to come and split the Red Sea. And now we're seeing the Republicans starting to split. Because now some of them are starting to rise up and say, there's, oh, there's 75 million Christians. I want to be the spokesman for these Christians now. So now you got these politicians rising up and want to be on TV and give voice to the Christians now because say, I'm with them. I want their vote. But when you split the Red Sea, they walked over on dry ground. God's going to split this nation uh, <coughs> politics to where the church, the true remnant church is going to walk through and come out prosperous on the other side. And the sea will close up again. Now remember, the prophetic word, I prophesied is, and I'm going to prophesy it again, that God said he was going to clean out the Democratic Party, all the corruption. And then he was going to clean out the Republican Party because he don't like either one of them. He don't like what they've been doing. There's going to be a new party that's going to rise up out of that. And I call it the kingdom party. Hallelujah. The kingdom's going to rise up and become the new party in the earth. Amen. Do things God way. Now I said, God said, the, I, my eyes are upon you. The finger of God is showing up. And now the hand of God. Remember I said, go back on my YouTube page. I did a prophetic teaching about the next 10 years. We're in a new era, a 10-year era. I said 2021 is going to be the time where the weight of the prophet's voice is going to be so powerful that it's going to shape cities and nations. The glory and the weight, the unity of the, of the, of the ministry. God's hand is going to show up. God said, I'm going to, the word is O-O-K, it's called oik in Hebrew for 2021, for one. That word means to press down like a pressed down cart of, of, of hay, how a donkey is pulling it, pressed down, it's so weight. God said, I'm going to put my finger on mankind. I'm going to press it down to where you're going to have to say, uncle. I'm going to press you down. He said, but if you repent now and turn around now, I'm not going to put pressure on you. I'm giving you opportunity to repent. I'm giving you opportunity to return. He said, return to me, and I'll return to you. And if you read Malachi, he said, you're cursed with a curse because you didn't pay your tithes and offerings. He said, return to me. With bones. And what, he said, return what? He said, you return the glory due my name. You worship me. I'll return your prosperity. I'm going to bless you. Some of you have been blessed this year. My daughter been blessed. Brand, baby this year. Brand new house this year. In the midst of a pandemic. How, you, how God do that? How he do that? Well, you know how God did it. God did it. Some of you, you got a house this year. How God do that? You were sleeping on the couch. How God do that? You stood in faith. He said, thou will show me the path of life. Thy, in thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures for evermore. The right hand of God is about to hit the church, but the right hand of God is going to hit the heathen too. Amen? See, I can, I can bless you and, and lay hands on you and bless you with my right hand. But then I can slap you if you... <laughs> I don't want to be slapped by God. You rub my head, George. Just go on, rub, rub my shoulder, rub my head. Psalms 91 says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I ran out of time. The battle increases in 2021. There's going to be a wealth transfer of money. There's going to be money like you've never seen before into the church. But at the same time, the wicked are going to fight with their money. They're already fighting with their money. You can't even get elected president unless you got billion dollars. 
You can't even elect to the mayor of a city unless you got $500 million. Everybody's buying a position, but God's going to raise up a church that will begin to raise up kingdom people to begin to prophesy the word of the Lord into, the, into our governments. Your blessings are going to increase, but judgment's going to increase also. Hear me. I'm going to say this on tape, and you can take me. If somehow they make Biden president, which he won't be president for about a couple of weeks, they just want him as a, as a place setting to put Harris in, and then they'll put Buttigieg in with him as vice president, you will see so much destruction in America coming this spring. You're going to see tornadoes like you've never seen, earthquakes like you've never seen. You're going to see stuff that's going to, that's going to blow your, just blow your way. God's going to shake this place so bad that they're going to say, get them two out of the office and bring Trump back in. It's going to get bad. So we got to pray. Continue to press in that God will say what he said. God said he's getting ready to speak. We've listened to the news radio. We listened to Biden. We listened to Trump. We listen to all that. Now God said, I'm going to speak. I'm going to take over. I'm going to show myself strong on your behalf. There's gonna, there, the next 10 years are going to be 10 years of exposure of corruption in nations. Some of these nations are so corrupt, I'm telling you, they are corrupt. You go to Nigeria, you better know, you, you, better, you better watch yourself because everybody steal from you. And they call themselves Christians. My friend, uh, uh, Bishop Omo Jesu, uh, we drove six hours. I say, he's, he's, seven, he's almost 80 now, 80, 81 or 82, and he's driving. I said, why don't you have your driver drive? He said, I hired two different drivers, and twice they, they, they stuck me up. Came into his compound, took thousands of dollars. He couldn't even trust and they were supposed to be Christians. Couldn't even trust them. He said, I got to drive myself. I don't trust none of them. You go to Nigeria, you go, the, 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 the Nigeria, you got a 40-pound weight bag, bag, weight limit on your bag. The Lord spoke to me before I went to get into the airport. He said, Take you, get your scale and weigh your bag. My bag weighed 35 pounds. When I got to the airport, they put my bag on a scale, and they said my bag was 10 pounds over. They had turned the scale to where it makes you over, and if, you, if you're over any kind of pounds, they charge you $100. But I was watching the guy. I said, get your foot off the scale. <laughs> See, I'm standing there. He didn't put the bag on the scale. He behind the scale, and he got a little foot on the scale. <laughs> I said, I know I weighed my bag. I pulled my little weight thing out and put it on the back. I said, look at this. You're not getting my money. God already warned me you're going to try to steal from me. You got to watch him. We went, I took a team to India, and we went shopping at the end of, end of the thing, and we went into the shop, and they were buying material and buying stuff, and uh, uh, we bought, bought the thing, bought clothes and stuff. We spent several, through $300, and they charged us tax, and they weren't supposed to charge us tax. And the pastor that hosted us, after we had left, went back to the shop and got the money from the tax. Pat was there. He was so wicked that he made a, in cahoots with the guy that owned the store that he get the money. And then he came back. He, we had raised all this money. Then he said he lost all the money in the airport. Somebody stole his bag. We're in a time of convergence. The spirit of Elijah dealing with Baal and, and, and abortion. And we got, on the other hand, Moses at the Red Sea. This is where the church is. And the church is going to come out with gold, silver, apparel, clothes. They didn't come out broke. They're giving you a stimulus check again. They're going to give you $600. What are you going to do with me? My wife's talking about this morning. What you going to do with $600? You can't get nothing to eat good. Jesus. They ain't do nothing with no $600. But that's supposed to appease you, peasants. That is the world system. I had a, I had a pastor that got mad at me because I said, if you're on Link Card and, 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 and SNAP program, you're in, you in, in Egypt. Oh, that's insistent. Well, you're in Egypt. Your church is shut down. You can't pay the mortgage for your building. You're in Egypt. God's got a better plan. He's about to bring us out of Egypt. Revelation chapter 3 or 4 talks about come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you unto myself. There's a coming out that we've got to come out of the world system. There is an apostolic financial system that God has set up. God has given his prophets and apostles ability to bring supernatural provision to your house. Your meal bearer will not fail. Your cruise of oil will not fail. 
Every, if you read about Elijah and Elisha, they always created financial miracles. Everything that you need, when Jesus came on the show, he shifted the economy of a whole nation when Jesus came in and he turned over the money table, changed his table. Paul preached. city got so mad that they beat him and left him for dead because he began to preach against Diana and the statues and the temples that, were, uh, that they were making. And the silversmith and Alexander the Smith, they got mad at him and they ran and, and, they, and ran into the, 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 the theater and they were all mad and upset because they were messing with their financial system. When Jesus comes and the apostolic comes, it's going to mess with the economic systems of nations. Apostles will have the ability to create something out of nothing. I ain't got no money, apostle. Go fishing over at Booth's over here and the first fish you pull up, you're going to find some money in it. God's going to do some creative things and show you how powerful he is. Amen. You're going to wake up one morning and find out there's $5,000 in your account and know how you got that $5,000 in your account. Hallelujah. You don't know what it is. I was arguing with my wife yesterday. Not arguing, but she said, well, we need some onions and you need to go to the store. I said, I, I, I need to make some dirty rice. I said, I, I, I'm going to buy some vegetables. I said, I'm not going to the store. You go to the store. And she's arguing back and forth. Arguing back. She said, I guess I'll go to the store. And when she got to the store, there was a lady at the end of the cash register paying for everybody's food in all this. I said, it wasn't meant for me to go to the store. You were supposed to go. You were supposed to go get the blessing. It wasn't for me to get. I, and that happens all the time. When she wants me to do something, go somewhere, and I said, no. Is there something rise up and say, no, God's getting ready to bless. He's getting ready to bless. And so get ready to get blessed. Get ready to get blessed. As we, as we step into this next year, you're going to be blessed. The play, you're not going to die of corona. 99.9% .9 people uh, survive corona. You had corona last year, they didn't even know it. You thought you had the flu, you had corona. <laughs> Couldn't breathe, no it all stuffed up. But I tell you, that night quail will take care of it all. Amen. <laughs> be walking around the house high. I looked at NyQuil and I said, 10% alcohol. Oh, Lord. <laughs> NyQuil got 10% alcohol in it, so y'all be killing yourself on that NyQuil. Your granddaddy. No, your granddaddy is the alcohol demon. You're drinking the alcohol demons there. You don't want the granddaddy. Hot toddy. Yeah, hot toddy. Well. Be talking to light switches when you get through. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Father, we thank you. What you're about to do. For you said you would come in the volume of your book and you shall suddenly appear in your temple. And Lord, I know you're, that, that you're, you, you said you're coming and, and you're approaching quickly. And we're sitting back. You, in fact, you told me, you said, get some popcorn, put your slippers on, and watch what's about to happen. We need not fight in this battle. They're going to see the hand of God and the voice of God. I prophesied, I speak that it's the hand of God. God said, I'm bringing my hand. Not only am I bringing my hand, I'm bringing my finger, and I'm writing upon the walls of the wicked. I'm wanting that they're weighed in, in, the, in the balance, and they're found wanting. I'm coming, said the Spirit of the Lord, to separate sheep, goat nations uh, are up in the earth. Those that are on the kingdom side shall be blessed. Those that have been fighting and, and, and corrupting their very people that they're supposed to be taking care of, God said, I'm going to remove their candlestick. I'm removing candlesticks in the church. I'm removing pastors from pulpits. I'm removing people that have been devouring my sheep and devouring my house. And my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. And I'm writing Ichabod on many places that it shall never open again. Many have not been, uh, have not been called by, by many of just uh, went their own way and did their own thing. But I'm calling out my true men and women of God in this hour. The prophet shall speak and guide and direct you. Obey your fathers. Listen to your fathers in the spirit and they shall direct your path and you shall not stumble. You shall not fall for I shall open up a wide gate and a pasture for you to go in and out and you shall be uh, rejoicing as sheaves, sheep left out of the stall the calves let out of a stall, jumping, shouting, and praising me for what I'm about to do. For I am the King of kings, and I am the Lord of lords, and the King of, and the Lord of hosts. And I have set a plan in place, and I set a plan in motion. For know that I am a strategist, and I know the strategies, and I know the dimensions of, 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 of chess, and the dimensions, and the enemy has never beaten me and will never 
beat me ever, said the Spirit of the Lord, for I am a winner, and you are a winner, and I've wrote success under your name, and I've wrote victory over your na- under your name, and you shall come out rejoicing. In fact, said the Spirit of the Lord, you shall laugh in these next weeks. You shall laugh joyously and hilariously 